Dinner for shoes, please. Hello. Welcome to another episode of Dinner for Shoes. I'm just warning everyone, the girls are off their rockers this morning. They are fighting like crazy. They're jumping all over the room. Um, watch like I say that and then they won't even be in the video, but they are, they seem to be on one. So we'll see what happens. Um, this video is going to be concise basically because we want to get it up quickly it's very early in the morning after the oscars and i wanted to come on here and just say that it's so funny because for years i would cover the oscars um for my job and i would be up till like 2 a.m making sure that all the after party galleries were set like everything was set before i went to sleep and then i would like wake up to scrolling 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 we'd have all the next day coverage and like it feels pretty interesting. Thank you, thank you. I actually removed that pillow from the set on purpose, but I mean, I guess if you want it there, you're just as much as part of Dinner for Shoes as I am. Um, but so anyway, I, it feels very different to have like actually enjoyed the show last night with my boyfriend and just watched and it, it, was, it was cool. Um, we watched the red carpet together and it was interesting because I actually interviewed three incredible stylists who we're gonna we're gonna get to to them, but um, I knew who they were they were dressing, so it was cool to look out for those looks. And we're gonna get into it. Um, I do want to start by describing my outfit, the outfit behind the shoes, and what I have here today that I'm sampling. I've been curious about it for a while. So okay, you know this episode is called Oleado and Oscars, right? So as far as the outfit goes, today I chose this Diaclepo amazing shoe, right? It's got a little kitten heel. It's gold. Does it not remind you of an Oscar? That's why I chose them. I'm also trying to wear... Mm -hmm. I think they were mad that um, some of the show the movies they liked got snubbed last night, like Barbie. Um, <laughs> No, obviously Oppenheimer was amazing and it was really cool to see them win so much. And uh, well, we're going to talk about this, but I loved seeing Emma Stone take home the award for poor things. OK, so um, this shoe, of course, it's got this incredible like decal here and it the insole is completely gold. It reminded me of the Oscars. I am trying to wear as many um, women founded companies and brands as possible for all of March. And this brand is really cool. The shoes are so comfortable. I will say the one thing about them that I absolutely love. It's my first time wearing them. Um, I, as we've mentioned before, as we've talked about in previous episodes, I'm not the best in heels. And this small kitten heel really works for me. It's sturdy. It's what I would wear on a red carpet if I were going on the red carpet. And this double twist around strap really holds in my heel. That is what I absolutely love about these guys. Now, that can stay for the whole episode because my snack this very early morning is from Starbucks. Let me just finish going through the rest of my outfit though. So in the same vein of wanting to wear woman-founded brands, this jumpsuit is by actually La V, which is a lower priced line of Rebecca Taylor. I love their stuff. They do a lot with denim. It's like kind of making denim feel overly ladylike and femme. And I love that. Um, so this jumpsuit, there's, I, it's very 80s, first of all, but there's a reason why I wore it today as well. I thought to myself, you're going to wear anything in your closet that has poop sleeves because Obviously, when you're watching the Oscars, you want to have watched as many movies as possible. So yesterday, before the Oscars started, my boyfriend and I devoted our time to watching some of the movies. We were surprised by how many of the movies we had actually already checked off the list, but we hadn't seen poor things. We saw like, hello, lo and behold, you can watch it on Hulu for your if you're you have a subscription. So we watched it. I am obsessed with all of Emma Stone's outfits um, in the movie Poor Things, and she plays Bella, and Bella always wears like a poof sleeve, right? So I went to my wardrobe this morning and I was like, okay, I am going to find any poof sleeve item I have in my closet and wear it. And I actually am recording a reel. I just recorded a reel about um, all of Bella Baxter's outfits and poor things. So look out for that as well. Um, but yes, it was incredible incredibly well done. Um, and even more appropriate is that Holly Waddington won for best costume design and she 
was in charge of all the costumes and poor things. So check out my reel if you want to see some amazing outfits that Emma Stone wears as Bella Baxter. And this jumpsuit is 100% inspired by Bella. Um, also, my boyfriend and I were watching it and he was like, I feel like you're Bella. And I was like, I feel like that's not a compliment, but I also feel like you're right. <laughs> Um, so anyway, that that's poor things. And that's my whole outfit tie in. Now to fit the whole vibe, I have been dying to try the Oleato from Star Starbucks. I mean, this is so it, I believe it's a I, I actually asked Alexa this morning. So we already got that combo done. But I, it's a a shot of like cold pressed olive oil in the foam that goes on top. And when I first got the coffee, it looked very ombre, very cool. Like almost like an Oscars gown, I would say. Like an os like an ombre Oscars like sequin gown. And then as time went on, the foam kind of like dripped in, right? So now it's like kind of like a white drink. I'm really excited because I actually stood my ground. I did not take a sip until I was sitting here in front of you guys. So you're gonna all see my first sip of the Oleato. I got it exactly as it's recommended on the menu, by the way, important. So this is a tall um, golden foam, which is the Oleato foam shaken blonde espresso. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So I like it. I like it a lot. There is toffee nut. It's, it's recommended to have the toffee nut flavoring in the coffee. And I can taste that even more than I can taste the olive oil. It could just be because this was sitting for a little while while I was taking pictures, but it, it's a little water, watery, waterier than I expected. Um, but it's really good. And I think maybe if I shake it up a little more, I'm like put in some fresh cubes. I mean, I'm gonna drink this. Would I make it my new Starbucks order? I don't know. The taste is like a very light toffee cream, I would say. Like if you had whipped cream and you wanted to like pour it in your mouth, which I do all the time, and it like had like a toffee nut flavoring, that's what this tastes like with like a little bit of like water. In a good way. In a good way. Don't want to knock Starbucks. All right. Let's get into the stylists that we talked to. The stylists that we talked to um, are incredible, first of all, and they helped me spread the love by giving shout outs to some of the other women stylists in the industry. I think it's super important to celebrate women in whatever craft they do and that for me, like I was like, okay, obviously I'm going to have as many women stylists on as possible. That's not you. You are not a woman stylist. You're a woman cat. Um, as many women stylists on as possible who were styling celebrities for the Oscars. So we talked to Ariel Tunnel. She will be the last interview that you get to see because we actually had her on the show um, it, virtually. And then we also talked to Kesha McLeod, who styled Serena Williams for the Vanity Fair party. And we also had, um, we talked to Emily Evans, who styles Ashley Graham and styled her for the Vanity Fair party. Both of those looks, Serena and Ashley, incredible. We're going to talk about each one, but let's, what I'm going to do is Kesha, actually, she sent her responses to my questions back via email. So I'm going to read you some of the incredible things that she said about her work. And then we're going to move on to Emily, who I was voice memoing with. Um, and you're going to get to hear some of what she has to say about what she does. Now, okay, this is from Kesha. So she actually dressed PJ Tucker and Serena Williams for the Vanity Fair Oscar party, which everyone knows comes after the Oscars. We're going to talk about my best dress there too. Since Women History, History Month, I wanted her to talk about one of her woman clients that she dresses and explain why she loves working with her. And she chose Serena appropriately. While I work with many amazing women, I am working with Serena Williams for the Vanity Fair party, so it's only right that I highlight her. Serena is one of my longtime clients and someone who I consider to be a sister and a mentor. Her beauty extends far beyond her physical appearance. What makes Serena truly beautiful in my eyes is her unparalleled strength, her determination, and resilience. These are qualities, in my opinion, that inspire admiration. And I totally agree. And Serena wore off-white to the Vanity Fair party. Like this gloved look. It was really cool. There was beads. There were matching beads on the gloves. So like on the, they were opera length um, gloves. And right, like hugging right by her bicep, which is like obviously Serena has the sickest body. And 
her biceps were perfectly highlighted by these beaded gloves and it matched the trim on her strapless dress. And she just looked incredible. Her waves, stunning. I mean, it's my dream to one day have my hair back to that, uh, texture again. Um, and it just, it, she really, really killed it. it. It was beautiful. Now, I'm not done. I'm not quite done reading Kesha's responses because as I mentioned, I wanted the styl the stylist who I talked to to kind of like spread the love and just give a shout out to another stylist who they think is doing a great job in the industry. So what Kesha said is there are so many amazing women who are my peers that I absolutely admire, such as Courtney Mays. I absolutely love her work. And might I mention her personal style? There's Rachel Johnson, whose game changing contri contributions to sports and fashion is undeniable. And also Carla Welch. I love her work and what she has been doing with Tracy Ellis Ross. I mean, Carla Welch and Tracy Ellis Ross are both, Carla Welch is a veteran in the styling industry and Tracy Ellis Ross loves fashion. So when an incredible experienced stylist comes together with someone who knows what works for their body and isn't afraid to experiment, you're going to see magic. So I completely agree with her there. I also asked Kesha, what does it mean to be a woman stylist in 2024? She said, I've been in this industry for 18 years. In this era, being a woman stylist means leveraging my career experiences, lessons, and mistakes to write a book and evolve it into an e-course that continues to inspire, empower, and guide upcoming stylists and creatives. It means staying informed and adaptable in ever-evolving industry. Overall, being a woman stylist in 2024 is about using my platform and expertise to inspire, empower, and pay it forward and having an impact. And I just love that answer. And I love that she's taking everything she's learned from the industry and giving back and writing about it. That's just so cool. Um, as far as the industry, she's really excited to see women in fashion continue to push boundaries, break barriers, and pave the way for a more inclusive, sustainable, and empowering future of fashion. I would say that kind of like goes with my whole ethos of this show, right? Like that's what we hope as well. And I asked her too, I asked all the stylists I talked to, when you think of the Oscars, what comes to mind? And instead of naming like a iconic moment, which the other two women stylists did, Kesha said, Hollywood and timeless glamour, sophistication, elegance, and opulence. I always look forward to seeing all the looks on the Oscars red carpet, as do I. So, okay, let's now get into my conversation with Emily. Emily Evans styles Ashley Graham, who also wears amazing looks. Um, Ashley is, she stands for empowerment. She is a inclusivity activist. Um, she is everything. Ashley Graham really does do it all. And she's a mother as well. And okay, so let me just show you what she wore to the Vanity Fair party. She wore this incredible, incredible, incredible. I saw Gaurav Gupta who um, made this dress. I hope I pronounced that right. Um, Gaurav Gupta. And Ashley wore this slitted dress. It's a gown. It has a sheer skirt with tons of sequins, almost like lining the pleats on this piece of like art, really. Um, I also did notice that this is a major trend. Black was a huge trend at the Oscars. If you did watch the red carpet, you would know that. And so Ashley was continuing that on at the Vanity Fair party, but so were like really sculptured, almost like sharp knife-like um, necklines. And that is what is shown here in this look. And I kind of love how Ashley's hair too, like the one piece kind of reflects the shape of her dress. I think that that's so neat and cool. And she really got away with wearing a cool heel that's somehow non-distracting from the gown and just totally works. So I do love that. Now I'm going to play Emily's responses for you because she, well, first of all, has a lovely voice. And second of all, said, something so beautiful about Ashley and it just shows how strong their bond is and how much she really loves working with Ashley. So I'm going to play that for you right now. So one of the reasons that I love working for Ashley is she's one, one of the most beautiful women in the world. Um, so that's just incredible to look at every day. Um, and she is so positive and I just think that her confidence is something that just rubs off on everyone and her positive attitude in life. And she's always looking on the bright side. She's such a big advocate for body diversity, which I really admire. And you know what? 
just the way that she makes other women feel like she's a real girl's girl and I really like that because so many people aren't and I just think that she always knows having her as a client she always knows that I try absolutely everything for her so she always knows that I've tried my best whatever the situation we've been put in and um yeah she's just a joy to be around it's also so true that, I don't know, I mean, I obviously don't know Ashley Graham and I've never met her, I've never interviewed her, but I've always thought like to be at a party with her would be really cool. And you do get a good sense, of, especially given how real she is on social media, that she's such a girl's girl. So I did love that. And then I also did ask Emily just about what it means to be a woman stylist in 2024. And she talked about multitasking and how we women are just so great at doing a million things at once. And I think that that's just like everyone's response because it's so true. And it's the first thing that I think about that like ties all women together, right? Like we are all very different, but what we share is the ability to multitask in, in, in a way that, you know, I think men don't understand. Um, and then I just wanted to uh, finish by playing one other um, voice memo that Emily sent me. So I did ask her, you know, um, what she wants to see more of in the industry right now. And when you think of an Oscars red carpet look, what comes to mind? What do you envision? So here's what Emily had to say. You know, my most memorable Oscars moment, and I can't remember what year it was in, but it may be when I kind of first started like really getting interested in like red carpet looks was when Gwyneth Paltrow wore the pink powder pink Ralph Lauren. And it was just incredible. And she won. And her hair was like back in low bun. And she had a diamond necklace on and this incredible pale pink dress. And I just remember that as like a really memorable moment for me about that for me was like modern Hollywood glamour. I did love that moment too. And if you love the Oscars in fashion the way I do and the way so many people do, you might find yourself like getting caught scrolling through like a best Oscars uh, looks of all time gallery. I, I tend to. And I definitely always see that look come up as well as the Michelle Williams look that Ariel Tunnel, the final stylist who I talked to, loves. Um, so we both like shared our love for... Um, this Michelle Williams look when I interviewed her, but you're gonna get to enjoy the full interview with Ariel, so go take a look. Okay, so tell us who you were addressing for the Oscars or Vanity Fair party, and like, what are you excited about? All right, I'm dressing three people this Oscar season. Awesome. Um, well, I'm dressing three people for the Oscars carpet. Um, Karen Ryan, she's a producer on the Netflix film Nimona, and she's a friend from years and years so it's really fun to oh see her kind of have this moment and get to play with her in this way it's really fun and then I'm also dressing Sammy Birch and her husband Alex Mechanic who they are the co-writers of um, May December uh, which is a Netflix film and we've been working with them since I've been working with them since about November when okay. the movie came out so it's been really exciting to kind of be on this entire run because of course the goal is you know I, you hope you make it to Oscar so it's exciting to be here with them yeah, that's so exciting. And it sounds like so much fun to dress your friend. I feel like I would have a ball with that. Yes, it's been it's been really fun and super easy and, you know, kind of um, rewarding in a different way because there's a comfort there that's kind of built in. Yeah, I love that. Um, okay, so since it is Women's History Month, one of the things that I'm asking the stylists to do that I'm interviewing is just kind of choose a woman that you work with who you love to dress. Can be someone who you just started with or someone you've been dressing forever. And talk about like why you love them, what makes them beautiful, and yeah, why you're proud. Um, well, first of all, I would say that I'm proud of all of my female women clients because they're all incredible. They're all so multifaceted. They're all so talented. They wear all these hats. Some of them are mothers. And it's always just incredible and inspired by all of them. Um, but this week I've been working with Paula Pell, who is a legend in the comedy world and, uh, you know, SNL for however many years, millions it feels like. Um, and she's on Girls 5 Ever, and she's having this kind of renaissance in her 50s and 60s as an actress after having this legendary career as a writer. Mm. And she's just so comfortable in her own skin. Yeah. It's like really inspiring to me when we work together. She just knows who she is, and I think that that's so cool to see. Um, and then I work with Stephanie Beatriz a lot. She's a close friend, uh, and we've been working together for a few years now. And she has a young daughter, and she wears so many hats, and 
you know, she's done in Kanto, she does drama, she does mm. all of these things, and she never ceases to amaze me. Yeah, I do. I was like literally just talking about this with someone about how like women just we you know take on so many different tasks at the same time, and it's yep. really incredible. I feel like that's so easy to admire when you see that happening all the time. You do, and, and I think we all do it to a certain extent because it's somehow ingrained in us to just do it. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's really uh, inspiring to see women just really conquer it all. Yeah. For real. Um, do you have any peers or just any like women stylist duos that you love seeing um, work their magic on the red carpet, whether it's this season or just in general? Um, I always really admire uh, Rebecca Price mm. and her work. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. She's a close friend and she's been somebody who's been a bit of a mentor to me and just a kind of a troubleshooter. I can okay. call her, you know, and she's been through all of it and she's just been so gracious and um generous with her advice and her knowledge in this industry and I love what she does with Kate McKinnon and Maya Rudolph and she recently worked with Sarah Snook which was gorgeous mm -hmm. so she always I mean I'm always endlessly impressed that's really great to hear I love it when like it doesn't feel like lately at least like stylists are so like I'm you know I get this this dressing and you get that one like everyone's really supportive and I feel like that's really great to see especially during award season when people are being like super noticed for what they're doing. Yes. So what does it mean to you to be a woman stylist in 2024? Um, such a good question because it means so many things. And I, and I kind of think on different days, it might mean different things. Definitely. But I think that for me, it means that I need to treat all of my women, all of my clients as individuals. Hmm and really listen to them and what they need and cater to their needs, whether that is what based on size, color, gender expression, um, how they're feeling at that season in their lives, because we change and we're not a one size fits all stamp of I'm a woman. Everybody mm -hmm. needs different things. Um, and, you know, I think women have a lot of insecurities that we don't always own up to, but yeah. I think a lot of them, come out when you're in this intimate relationship of your body. Yeah. And so I think to me, the way that I approach it is just trying to really listen and dress them with intention and think about what serves them as an individual in this moment, because every day is different. Yeah. I love that. That's a great, great answer to like a very broad question. Um, but to me, it just seems like, yeah, I just don't think there's a one size, you know, fits all approach to any of it. Of course. So making it more individual seems to be the most logical thing to me. Yeah. Yeah. So I know also that inclusivity is so important to you. And how do you think the fashion industry can be better at being size inclusive, I feel like this is such a, like, I literally feel tired asking the question because it's so, sure. yeah, it's just so unfortunate to see how slow the industry is to bring that to us. But what are some ideas you have and maybe like what frustrates you about it, honestly? Um, it, it, it's such a layered issue, I think. Um, and you know, it always kind of feels like one step forward, 10 steps back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But I do really think that having representation um, in the visible public eye is step one, right? Like we yeah. need to see more. Um, and so I think it's really incredible what we're seeing this award season, yeah. like what Jason is doing with Lily Gladstone and what women and Micah are doing with Divine and what Jennifer Austin is doing with Danielle. I mean, it's incredible and it's really incredible to see so many of these big designers making custom looks for these women. Yeah. It shouldn't be groundbreaking, but it feels like it is to see three of them in the same season turning out these looks because these looks are typically given mm -hmm. or awarded mm -hmm. to size zero models. Yeah, 100%. Mm -hmm. So I think what we're seeing this award season is really incredible and really exciting because it's not just one, it's three. Yeah. So that tells me it's not the exception to the rule. It can be the norm. Yeah. And hopefully we just see more of it. And I, yeah. Me too. I love that. But you... I think, 
I think one of the issues mm. is budget yeah. because a lot of these brands don't have the money or the resources to make custom looks or to pull from stock or to, you know, pull from the store or the warehouse to give us the sizing that we need to mm-hmm. fit our clients. Mm-hmm. But then, you know, the studios don't give us the budgets where we can necessarily shop. So there is all of these other kind of red tape political things, of course. Yeah. But I think seeing it is always the first step. Yeah. Yeah. And you recognizing it and also wanting to talk about it whenever you can. Like, I mean, you really put this talking point into our conversation today. And that is, it's super, super important that we continue to do that. I think like realistically, if I look at my client base, none of them are really sample. Mm -hmm. That doesn't mean we can't make samples work Mm -hmm. with resources and tailoring and tricks and magic. (laughs) But the reality is that most women are not a zero. Of course. Or a two. Right. So it just is kind of this common sense issue to me, but I know that not everybody feels that way. And I also know that it's also more, it's more cost effective to make a tiny dress. Yeah. Yeah. That is like the unfortunate reality of it. Um, It is. We can talk about inclusivity here, but you can also expand it. But what are some brands that you love working with? Maybe they're smaller or lesser known, or maybe you just discovered them Mm -hmm. that you feel like they are really showing and having the conversation about inclusivity. Yeah. You know, I think that, um, I think there's a lot of, like, we're seeing some of it on the runway, which is exciting brands like and designers like Siriano and Probel are mm-hmm. definitely including some different shapes in their runway collection, which is so important. Mm-hmm. But then we have designers like there's um, Sachin and Bobby makes beautiful evening wear and they go all the way up to a size 22, which is kind of unheard of. Mm-hmm. And so like, that's huge yeah. because I do have a couple clients that fall in the plus size mm-hmm. and that shouldn't be that hard to find, you know, beautiful special occasion wear. Yeah. But it, really comes down to a handful of brands. And so that's one that I feel like time and time again, they come through with those extended sizing to really serve that market that is so underserved. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great answer. Um, What are some of the things that you hope to see, I guess, both for women and from women right now in fashion in general, and maybe in the red carpet industry or styling industry as well? Um. Well, I, I can use what I'm going through right now as an example. My client, Sammy, um, we are in the very fortunate position where we're having a custom gown made for Oscars. Amazing. And it's so beautiful and it's so wonderful. And Kate and Laura at Rodarte have been so generous to make this beautiful dress for her. Mm-hmm. And so to see two women make this successful writer feel like the queen that she should Mm -hmm. has been so inspiring because they understand her body. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, you know, they, they've made beautiful dresses for Lily and for, um, divine this season as well. And so I really love that they're kind of stepping up to the forefront and they are making these gowns for women, making these beautiful things that are custom made and they're nailing it. Yeah. And I think that's really cool to see. And I hope more brands and designers take their lead. Totally. And I think the cool thing about... follow their lead. Excuse me. I said the wrong thing. Follow. follow. Yeah. (laughs) Um, (laughs) No, for sure. I think the the cool thing about Renarte too is like their designs, and this is not to like put down any other designer or fashion house, but their designs are so intricate too. So to show like how involved they are and that they can literally be made at any size for any person, like no matter their status or what they do in Hollywood is like, yes, really it's great. really incredible. Yeah. And, and yeah, it's, it's interesting. Like, you know, so many of their dresses have this soft ethereal feel. Mm-hmm. And so sometimes you think, Oh, that's not going to work on a bigger frame or a bigger mm-hmm. shape because you know, all we all have these limitations of, you know, is it the bus size? Is it the shape wear? Is it, you know, is it just my comfort in how much body am I showing? And yet they have the design skills and the incredible eye to make everything look so beautiful despite their DNA or because of their DNA of their brand, because it's so soft and feminine. It's just really cool to see what they can do with that. 
Yeah. And it's also so important to remember like plus size is not a body type. Everybody's body is just shaped differently. And like yes. they can recognize, you know, like maybe this person really is excited to show up their shoulders or whatever it may be. Like, yes. you know, they apply it to the person. Yes. They're, they're incredible designers. So I'm so excited yes. to see that. Well, that's going to be. Yeah. I'm very great. excited. I'm very honored. And we're just so flattered. Um, that they, you know, took the time to make this for Sam because it's so special for all of us. Yeah, a hundred percent. And it's also like, I mean, she's incredible too. So she deserves yeah. like, that, that's well, awesome. And like you, to your point, plus size isn't a size and also plus size isn't a bad word. Yeah. It's not a bad word. Yeah. It just means that you are not in what is considered standard, which is it normal. Up. <laughs> is it so normal? Yeah. It's so it's so messed up. Yeah. Um, well, from just like I guess a dream perspective, when you think of red carpet dressing, like what are some of the things that you think of? Whether it's maybe like a look in history that you just always go straight to, mm-hmm. or it's like, you know, the type of dress, the type of like evening wear. Um, well, I think I think every red carpet can be a little different because there's obviously ones that are a little bit more relaxed Mm. and um, irreverent versus the ones like the Oscars that are obviously the gold standard. Right. Um, My favorite carpet look of all time would be Michelle Williams in the marigold dress. Oh my gosh. Yeah. The red (laughs) lip. I mean, like death. Yeah. It changed my life. I loved it so much. I think about it often um, because it was just, picture perfect and those colors together against her skin with the short pixie I just ugh, come on. yeah um but I think like especially when it comes to Oscars I think that what uh, what comes to mind is timeless mm-hmm. classic Hollywood a bit of like a respect for the craft yeah and the institution of the academy like there's a level of respect there that you know, you're not going to see the VMAs. Yeah. Let's say. Yeah. It's a little different. Apples and oranges. Um, so I just love the Oscars, the diamonds, the, there's just a, again, respect for the institution, the craft, the industry. Um, and I just love the fanfare of it all. I think it's really like, that's a great way to put it. And I think it's so cool that we can like take fashion and interpret in that way. Like, right. Yeah. You know? Yes, absolutely. And it can still be fun, but there's something about it that's almost reserved. Yeah. Yeah. Compared to, you know, some of these other carpets where you can have a little bit more fun. The Oscars is kind of not the place to take risks. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because it should be just perfectly Oscar worthy. Yeah. And it, and it, it somehow it always ends up, well, usually it ends up being that, or in the best case scenarios, it ends up being that, but then also still expressive of the person wearing it, which is exactly. like the perfect. <laughs> You're just like, right. Which is why timeless really comes into play because you want those images to stand the test of time. Yes. Yes. So beyond the red carpet, what are you excited about in 2024? Um, with your clients what what projects are you taking on can you tease anything what should we be on the lookout for mostly in 2024 i'm excited to be back to work because 2023 was definitely um bumpy Mm -hmm. with the strikes uh, all for the right reasons Mm -hmm. and i support all of it but it you know we all took a hit yeah um so i'm really just happy to be back to work and uh I, you know, I have this wonderful client base of these women that are so talented and so funny. Um, so they're always surprising me with the projects that they do, the projects that are being, you know, that are premiering soon, whether it's a new Netflix show or South by Southwest projects. Mm-hmm. Um, they're also, you know, in production on new projects that are kind of exciting that will be rolling out this year. So they keep me on my toes. Yeah. Um, because there's so much out there. They're so multifaceted that, you know, there's a range of projects. And mm-hmm. it's also really fun to kind of, you know, sometimes create the press looks and stuff kind of in correlation to the theme of the projects yeah. and things like that. So it's super fun. And I try not to look too far ahead because so much of this happens on a moment's notice. Oh, yeah. Um, and I just kind of ride the ride. And, and luckily, I have these amazing clients that take great care of me. And I'm so lucky to work with all of them. 
and it's been a joy and I hope there's more of it this year. I love that. And I really commend you for it because I'm so the type of person where like, if something was thrown at me at a moment's notice, like I just scream. <laughs> and retreat to the bedroom so I mean yeah like the way that you have to drop everything to like make a project come to life and like call in you know the fashion resources yeah. you need is admirable yeah well and I think I think that yes there are times where you have to drop everything and it's like crazy crazy but then I also think there's a rhythm to it that if you work smarter and not harder there's always a way to pull it together so that it still remains fun. I hope you enjoyed that interview with Ariel. I had so much fun talking to her. Um, and actually, she I did catch a look at the Rodarte dress that we were talking about. Sammy and Alex, um, she dressed for the Oscars. And this incredible Rodarte dress is just so flattering. It's kind of, it's got a lot of detail and a lot of texture in there. And it looks like busy, but also beautiful. Like busy and beautiful, but also simple at the same time. And I think that like, again, that is the craft that Kate and Laura from Rodarte have the power to bring to life. It's just beautiful, stunning, stunning look. And um, Sammy has a bob like me and I love the way it's styled, really clean side part. And you've got the barrette there. That's just really beautiful. I like the bright lip too. Okay, so let's quickly go over my best dress on the Oscars red carpet. We're gonna flash my reel that I already created. It's already been out in the world. I named my best dress at the Oscars. All right, let's really quickly do best dress at the Oscars. Um, I really liked Simu Lu in this Fendi look. Um, love the brooch here, really sleek. I feel like Florence Pugh is always on my list of best dress, but she's wearing Delcor and kind of looked like this sculptural mermaid. Her stylist, Rebecca Corbin Murray, shared a quick shot of the details on this dress and it's incredible. The look was finished with an incredible sculptural necklace to match. We also have Jennifer Lawrence in Dior. I don't know, there's just something about this. I love how she's wearing the shawl off the shoulder, one shoulder with it off, one shoulder with it on. It's cool, it's doing her quiet luxury thing for her, but glamorized. I usually don't love Emma Stone's red carpet style, but this Louis Vuitton, I was a really big fan of, having just watched Poor Things. And finally, America Ferreira, who's just such a winner in my book. This chainmail Versace dress is custom and it's Barbie pink, but it's not trying to. All right, now we're gonna quickly go over who I think was best dressed at the Vanity Fair party. The Vanity Fair party always sees almost every single celebrity. It's pretty crazy how many celebrities end up on this red carpet. It's almost as extravagant as like the Met Gala. And I wanna talk about the people who really blew me away with their Vanity Fair looks. So the first one I wanna talk about is Lily Gladstone, who wore Gucci, but listen to this. So her fringe look also in the same way as the Rodarte dress that we were just looking at has this like moving, um, I mean, it was full of fringe, but this like really busy uh, texture going on, but it's just so elegantly draped. And I love the square neckline here. And Gucci actually posted about it and said that it was a collaboration between creative director Sabato de Sarno and indigenous designer Joe Big Mountain of Iron Horse Quill Work. Lily Gladstone made history as the first Native American woman to be nominated for Best Actress for Killers of the Flower Moon, which was an incredible movie. And I highly recommend you check it out. I think she did a great job in that movie and the look is just stunning. She did not win, but I have a feeling there is an Oscar in her future because she's an amazing actress. I also want to talk about quickly um, what Jared Ang does with Joey King. Joey King has been, in my book, killing it. One of the Hollywood stars who just keeps like putting out look after look after look and they've been incredible. She wore Balenciaga. She also happened to be at the previous Balenciaga show. So I feel like that was kind of like, you know, something in the making there. And I really liked how she wore tights underneath this gown with the black uh, gloves. She just made this look very effortless, but it's also so chic and somehow sporty and movable at the same time. It might be the look that I would choose to wear if I was going to the Vanity Fair party. Let's, you know, make believe. Um, someone else who's been doing the same for me lately is Haley Steinfeld. So she is styled by Robin Marielle and she wore Alexander Vauthier 
And I thought this was a really cool look. It's kind of got like the layered tiered ballerina skirt and it's affixed onto a floor length um, skirt, which is beautiful. And there's a belt. This is all about gold hardware. I love gold hardware. So I think that's why I like this. And then there's a little cropped um, bolero uh, tuxedo jacket with stunning um, structured pointy lapels. That's just really, really cool. So I loved that look too. I also loved Donald Glover in Amiri. He's wearing this red, white, and black color blocked look with a pointed patent loafer that is just stunning. I think that that one like had to be called out. He had his red moment and I feel like a lot of actors and actresses straight away from red on this red carpet. So I'm glad that he he did deliver there. Now, something I was really surprised that I liked was Cami Mendez in Tamara Ralph. This gown is, I, I mean, we've talked about this before, I think, in other episodes, but jewelry as bodywear is a complete trend right now in Hollywood and all over the red carpet. And she has this ornate breastplate that's made of roses and it's covering her breasts in such a way that it looks like she's like displaying a, a work of art and then the rest is just completely simple. I think this is stunning. It was very smart to pull her hair back so that all focus could be on the dress. I just loved that moment as well. Finally, I want to talk about Margot Robbie. A lot of people were saying that they were disappointed in Margot Robbie's look um, at the Oscars, not at the Vanity Fair party, but just it was simple. It was black. I do think she looked stunning. I think it was elegant. A lot of people wanted to see her like channel another really eccentric Barbie, which she's been doing with her stylist, uh, Andrew Mukamal. But instead, I think she saved like the wow moment for the Vanity Fair party. She was wearing Mugle. Um, This is a 1996 runway look from the Ready to Wear collection. It is a corset, essentially, um, very 1920s. Uh, it's literally like giving Gatsby, right? And I love how she wore it with strap, lace, lace up, uh, wrap around stilettos. Those are incredible. And then she's got this brown satin shawl that she drapes lightly over her forearms on the red carpet. It's just so simple. Her hair is got that like soft wave, but not quite too overdone. I think she was saving her Oscars for where she could feel most like herself. I feel like she's been overdone through the whole Barbie press tour. And so this was kind of her reset. It was almost like, but this is me. Like I am a glamorous person at heart. I'm not really Barbie. I'm Margot Robbie. We're celebrating this work, right? So I really liked how she she did that. And I think she kind of like brought it home. Like if you were disappointed in her Oscars look, you feel like she redeemed herself at the Vanity Fair party. So those are my best dressed throughout Oscars night. Um, of course, I said that Kit and Trish were crazy and now they're both sleeping, one here and one here. Um, I hope you enjoyed. I really hope you enjoyed the interviews. I was so grateful to be able to interview three incredible women stylists for this episode. Um, we are so grateful in general how many people are excited to talk to Dinner for Shoes and let us know how much they love their work and what they do and we want to like celebrate them right back so uh please like share subscribe i just realized i forgot to talk about my earrings which are by eight other reasons i love you bye